Immutable distributions are getting more and more attention in recent years. I have already looked at Nix-based Nix OS, Debian-based Endless OS, and Fedora Silver Blue on my channel. Today, I want to talk about Ubuntu-based Vanilla OS. Let's begin. After giving the documentation a read, I found the distribution is using yet another approach to implement the immutability of the system called AB root. What it does is creating two root partitions using ButterFS and mounting them one at a time. It will switch every time the system reboots. When a user installs something using AB root command, the change will happen on the unmounted partition and sync to the current one when the system restarts. If anything fails during the process, the system will be automatically rolled back to the previous state to keep the change atomic. However, I found with this design, the system will only maintain two states, current and future at any given moment, meaning there is no way to roll back the system several steps into the history. Well, it's not like I will use Manila OS long enough to do any of that. I will hop onto another distribution for the new video in a couple of days. So let's just start the installation. It is a two-phase installation process. The first one is using the live CD. Like most of the other distributions, the user needs to specify the disk, set up time zone, keyboard, and account. Nothing special. The second phase is the initial setup after the first time boot up. I love this bit because it contains a lot of things I have to do myself on other distributions, like update the distro, NVIDIA driver, and media codecs. I can also see it automatically set up the flat hub behind the scenes, which made me started to like this distribution even before using it. Let it be known that a video driver here will not install the X settings for you, but the driver is working properly. I made sure of that by using NVENC codecs on OBS recording my desktop. Then I started some customizations on the desktop. I never understood why GNOME hides the maximize and minimize button in the first place. I always need to enable them after installing the pure GNOME desktop environment. The issue with Vanilla OS is that it is an immutable distribution which encourages users to use Flatpak. I can see most of the applications on Software Center are from FlatHub, and GNOME Twigs applications is not available there, which led me to start trying out APX the package manager developed for Vanilla OS. The command itself is quite easy to use. It feels like the apt commands with a different name, but under the hood, you will install all the applications inside containers just like Fedora Toolbox. And judging from the error message here, it is using Podman underneath. I was able to fix it by following the Podman GitHub issue page after removing the cache storage. Then I added the two window buttons using GNOME Twigs application. I also installed Emacs this way. I'm happy to see the installed applications are automatically added as desktop icon inside the application menu. Next, I see the APX command also support AUR, DNF, and APK flags. I was eager to try it out as this will make the distribution very attractive to me. With the stability of the immutable system, plus the exposure to the sheer number of applications available on Arches AUR, will make this distribution a unicorn to me. I started by installing the Brave Bin browser from AUR. It first gave me an error saying Git was not fine. I installed Git using the original APX command without any luck, and figure out that is because the AUR applications are managed in a separate Arch-based container, which makes perfect sense. So I used the AUR flag to install Git and found out not only APX can install from AUR, it can also fetch packages from Arch community repository, and Git was installed from there, which blew my mind again. After passing the Git issue, I saw another issue saying fake root binary was not found. And that is the issue of AUR missing base development packages. I installed those using the AUR flag again, and the browser was installed successfully. The next issue with AUR flag is that the desktop icon was not automatically exported to the whole system. 
I used APX enter to make sure the browser was working and then APX export with AUR flag to create icon properly. Next, I went to install the Extreme Download Manager. APX command has already made perfect sense to me at this moment. I used APX dash dash AUR enter to enter the Arch container and ran the application installer binary script without any error. After adding the Chrome extension to the Brave browser through the third-party CHX file, I was able to download videos. I have to say, APX is by far the easiest to learn and my favorite package manager on Linux. I haven't been this impressed by a tool in Linux since I learned about Flatpak. It's gaming time. Another side note that the initial setup of this distribution will also provide bottles which is an awesome tool for playing cracked games on Linux. You can see how I was using it in this video to play games on my external hard drive. Given the distribution developers are encouraging users to use applications from the software center, I installed Steam and Proton Tricks there. Logged in, enabled Proton for all games, installed Assassin's Creed Origins, started the game with the age old error message, used Proton Tricks to install Uplay and started playing. realize this game is super straightforward to set up as long as the distribution is not customized as a gaming distribution. It needed a different approach on Nubala and not playable on Regatta for me. I was not having high hope before using vanilla OS given it is not the most popular immutable system people talk about all the time. And on the surface, it looks like a simple Ubuntu Linux with a pure GNOME desktop environment. But after trying out APX command, it has become my favorite immutable system now. Although it only maintains two stages at any given moment, it still gave me the secure feelings like any other immutable system that it won't break easily by update. And it also impressed me with the extensiveness to use applications from Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch, and even Alpine or Alpine Linux with the cherry on the top that the flat hub and app image are automatically set up. I would recommend anyone who loves these ideas to try it out. I have the confidence to say you wouldn't be disappointed. And that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.